meeting to order. Welcome, everyone. I, I have to leave at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock hot stop. Okay. Let's try and get through the bulk of the agenda then. It, uh, it's uh, 6.02 p.m. Uh, water, Board of Water Commission is meeting at 401 Central Street. And this meeting is being uh, recorded for everyone that's in attendance. A few announcements first. Uh, the Town of Raleigh Water Department 2015 Annual Water Quality Report is available online at www.raleighwater.com. Go to the Water Quality Reports page for more information. If you'd like a copy mailed to you, contact customer service at 1-800-553-5191. Copies are also available here at the Water Department Office, 401 Central Street, and at Town Hall, 139 Main Street. Second item, there will be a Board of Health Information Meeting, April 19th, 2016, on the cross-connection control bylaw. All are welcome to attend and encouraged to attend. And I believe that'll be the second floor of Town Hall, Mary Beth, we're yes. using? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, third announcement, the Raleigh Water Department will be flushing hydrants as part of the program to improve water quality. Flushing will begin Tuesday, April 19th and continue until completion. Flushing takes place 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday to minimize delays. Flushing will also take place in high traffic areas at night along Route 1 and Route 133 from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Customers may experience some discoloration in water. Although measures have been taken to minimize the interruption, please plan, plan accordingly as we apologize for any inconvenience. Um, so, uh, to, 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 uh, 6.05, we'll uh, open Citizens Query. Does anybody have any questions or queries? I get a little cricket thing I've got to make some noises, which is beautiful. That's good. Um, there's no problems or issues. Oh. I just want to uh, respectfully remind the board that the appointments that we have tonight need to happen at the time. So if you would like to jump ahead to old business, we'll keep an eye on the clock for you. So we have to do them at the time? You do. We can't uh, redo them? No, you have to do them at the uh, posted time. Can't do them early. You can't do them early. So you could jump down to old business. Mm -hmm. um, Things should go pretty quick. All right. Okay. Uh, under duress, we'll move right along. So 6:20, if you would uh, just remind us. Um, I don't know. I'm going to ask really quick. Steve Comley, 6:20 appointment. Is someone here for that? And j just checking. And then Vincent D'Amato, 6:30. Are they here yet? Okay. So feel free to speak up if we don't stop for right. you. Okay. <laughs> just kind of an additional backstop. All right, so we'll get down to old business. Um, hang on just a second. This is getting myself organized. All right, discuss and vote on revised 2016 rally rules and regulations. And we had those last week, we reviewed them, and I think we only have to do the vote tonight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I put those in my. Make a motion to accept them. Uh, I went through them. Why is it so? Did you have a chance to go through them? Yes, I. Point and tool, as I mentioned at last week's meeting. It was in the middle. Your red light's not on, by the way. I don't know if that matters. All right. What I what I want to uh, mention. Just now. Under rules and regulations, uh, the fees. That's what I want to bring up. I think we have that further down. I think, I think it's separate. Number three. Yeah, fees. Yeah, yeah. 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 under three. Okay. Reba? 
Um, that is on the agenda later on, but if the board could just, if the fees are in this policy, yeah. but if the board could just vote with the exception of if any changes to any rates or fees. Well, we can vote on the whole pack, and right. then for, as number three is in, in discussion, we can vote to amend the one we just passed. Exactly. Are you okay with that, Sue? All right. So I just need a second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Oh, thank okay. you. Um, discussion of the water main extension policy. You tabled that also, but you just approved it because it's in here. <coughs> mm -hmm. I did make those changes, yeah, all three change, quarter so. inches to one inch, so it is it's incorporated into this. So yeah, that was a takeaway from last week. Yes. With you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm not taking them out. I got them all right here. Um, okay. And now um, item number three: discuss the turn off and. Turn on fees during normal business, normal business hours and after hours call out. And I, just like I mentioned it last week, I yep. think it's uh, unfair if somebody has one of the between the curbs talking to house, say, at 8 o'clock at night and they need the water pump and turn it on to uh, charge them for that. If, uh, if they left it running till morning, it would be more than they the fee and all the water wasted. I mean, that's that's a service we should be providing. And where do we have the, on this, Mary Beth, what fee is that? You had asked me to put, bring out again that spreadsheet where we did the cost comparisons. Yep. So this is what we handed in. Um, I just, if the board is going to make a decision tonight to vote to change that fee, I would respectfully ask that you wait. Um, that fee is incorporated into current budget situation. It was also factored in into the budget that was just approved by the Board of Selectmen. If you change these fees now, it will have an impact on the budget. And that's the after hours turn on, turn off? Yes. yes. And we're showing is nothing on this. Um, and then the other towns, 300 and 250 respectively. So the $150 uh, after hours call out fee, which is a standard fee that all water utilities charge, our fee is $150 because we pay the on-call operator at the overtime rate at $50 an hour. So if he goes out and responds for five minutes, we have to pay him $150, uh, 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 we have to pay for his three hour call out, which is a, a totals $150 for three hours. We have to pay him for a minimum. And that's to just recoup that, that cost. It is a standard fee to have this type of fee in your schedule. I never uh, experienced that in other towns. Well, it's inconsistent. For service, if you behind my meter that you have to pay to repair. And that's if, 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 you charge that, if you charge that fee, the customer might as well let it run until morning. And the fee is inconsistent. I mean, you report I mean, Ipswich have it, but the Byfield, Georgetown, and Topsfield um, don't. So it's not standard. Well, it's that, that's open to interpretation with respect to if 50% are doing it, 50% aren't. So if it's not on this list, it means that we may not have been able to locate it mm -hmm. easily to present to the board. So it's if the Lake Department has to come out that night to take your meter off for one reason or the other. They don't charge. It's part of the service. Barry? Mm -hmm. It's uh, part of the union contract where they're paid for the after hours work. So they will get $150 or so, <clears throat> uh, even if they're out there for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And you know the water department wages will be assessed that amount. So whether you collect it or not is up to you, but you will be paying for the operator's time, minimum three hours. Do the, um, the light department, are they under the same union contract? I don't think so. They're not union? Yeah. <coughs> well, that it's part of the, it's part, of the uh, part of the service, as far as I'm concerned. Somebody told you you have to pay $150 and you have a you leak at 8 o'clock at night and it's a large leak. Let it run till morning. Yeah. 
Mary Beth, you first. I just want to remind the board, if you decide to take away a fee that we currently are generating revenue from, we will have to make up that revenue somewhere else. So I just want you to keep that in mind as we're going to go over the next year looking at the rates. Mm -hmm. We're trying not to increase the rates, but in order to offset a rate increase for the water bills, you have to ha generate revenue in other areas. So I just wanted to remind the board of that. So how many call-outs do we get, do you, do you know, um, even if an estimate? On average, uh, actually, we just started putting that in the operating report, but on average, I mean, you know, it could have been 30, 40 calls a year, a total year, okay. for, for, for whatever it is. Okay. Just um, in the audience, if you're going to speak, you just need to say who you are and what, what street you're from for new people. I'm um, Jeff. I live on Boxer Road. Uh, are you char Are you currently charging the fee that hasn't been approved? You current. You said you're currently charging this fee that's been factored into the budget, even though it hasn't been approved. No, no. We it's it's on our books. We are charging it. Um, at the last water board meeting, um, Commissioner Dazel wanted to discuss either eliminating it or decreasing it. It has been approved. It has been approved. It has been approved. Yes. yes. So what? Uh, this is kind of a general question. I, I mean. I don't mean to hijack. I know you're working on time here. What say does the homeowner have? I mean, where does it end? Where do the fees end? With respect to everything, or, yeah. or just things everything. like this? I mean, I, I just I'm being charged thirty dollars now for for a service that's not being provided. The rate increases. Now an after hours fee. I mean, where does it end? Well, again, it's um, one of the things differently. And Mary Beth, or gentlemen, feel free to add in too. But with respect to the water department, it's singularly different than the, than the entire town. It's not like police, fire, or the schools in that we produce a product, a physical product, water, and it's run as a, I don't want to say a semi-government agency, but it, it, it is, it's a government age group, but it's run as an enterprise fund, which means you have to produce it, and then you have to collect the fees to pay to produce it and deliver it and maintain it. And in the past, um, how do I put this without them? Um, the, the department has matured, I guess is the best way to describe it. Things were kept in a big fungible pool and it was like, all right, we'll just pay for that. And, and it was like a big pile of money as they migrated towards, <coughs> excuse me, an enterprise fund, one, there was money going into one and the, the department was responsible for it. Two, in going just from distribution, which was just pump the water, throw some chlorine, out it goes. That, simple, but now there's a $12 million treatment plant that has to be run with technicians, with people with lots of letters after uh, their names. No, I know all about that. Yeah, and so in order to, to keep the rates from going far, far, farther north, um, and we're holding those rates for two years steady now, which is one of the goals that we have to look at it as, as we operate as a business, <coughs> where were the costs happening that we were not, we had no control of? And that is some of those fees. Excuse me. Yeah, I know what the fees are. <coughs> I know the money you have to make up. I know the whole story. I mean, but it's just being in the past year, it was rate increases last year, and now I'm being, so I decided to put a well on my property to stop paying, but now I'm being charged to operate a well and keep the meter. We'll discuss that on your yeah, thing. I hope so. there's, there's specific reasons for that. So I know I'm not the first person to speak up, but I mean, yeah. I, I know some of the board members are new. I don't mean to be uh, challenging, yeah. but it's just, it's, I, I almost can't afford water. Mm -hmm. You know? I understood. To Sorry. pay for past mistakes that were made. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not paying, it's not so much that we're paying for the past no, mistakes, but we're identifying things that weren't done that to continue to operate at the steady state would be, you'd be in bankruptcy. So from a business standpoint, you can either raise rates or control costs or do a, a balancing act. And Mary Beth has, has decreased the budget this year by about 5%. Um, it's, X the colas. It's more than that. I mean, Five to six percent. No, it's more than that. Oh, okay. Well, Nine, we'll be sorry. talking about the budget later. But so I mean, she's contained. She's you know um, organized the department, has contained the costs, driven down the costs. Um, when I came last year, uh, the first thing that was a, a twenty dollar. My first meeting was a twenty dollar fee that they had imposed, and that was quickly rescinded. 
and you know, as Mary Beth got a grip on running the department with all the new technology and things, um, he's able to line it up and control a lot of those costs so that um, we established the baseline rates last year, we're maintaining them this year, and the goal is to go at least the three years without having to raise those rates um, due to inflation. I mean, we get union contracts, et cetera, so um, to get creative managing all this, we had to plug some of the holes that were just never addressed. Um, so you are correct. It's like, why are these things happening? And it is sins of omissions and sins of the past. But hopefully going forward, you know, and having a very free and open situation here, you know, if people have questions, we'll do it above board. We'll talk about it. Um, and if things are um, need to be addressed, we'll, we'll certainly uh, listen and, and try to make, um, you know, try to, to, to change where we can, where we're allowed. Um, and some of it, some of the structure comes from the DEP and the feds with the EPA, um, especially what's come down is with the Flint situation, more regulations that are in the pipeline, um, and those have to be addressed. So I'm not a long-winded answer, but, but definitely we, we, we hear you, um, and we're doing the best we can right now. So someone else had a question. Bernie. Bernie Cullen, 283 Wellington Street. Also a candidate for the board. <laughs> I'll add that. No pool I wasn't going to add the time. Um, Thank you. Make sure people know. Um, so it seems to me as though this is an issue of how much money in total we, we're talking about. And if it's 30 call outs a year at 150 per, that's $4,500, which is about $3 per customer. Um, so that seems not a significant issue. If the issue is people are calling up for um, kind of minor issues, then perhaps the policy should be written so that if you call out for your convenience rather than for a real issue, then be aware that there's, you could get this fee. I mean, otherwise, you, you're charging, you, just like Stu said, you've got, a, you've got a major leak. You want it fixed. Everybody wants it fixed. And so charging a customer for a major leak is, seems counterproductive, as opposed to doing something a little more measured. Really? So for example, a couple of weeks ago, we got a call out for no water. Okay, Raleigh dispatch called, operator responded. He got three quarters of the way here and the customer called and said, oops, we figured out what's wrong and I still have to pay that guy a three hour call out. But the customer called, we responded and we actually didn't go there, but we still have to pay. The customer should be charged a $150 call out fee, which they actually were because they called us out. Vincent Tomato, 46 Christopher Road. What happens if you're over the three hours? If it's a major problem, they were there for eight, ten hours overnight, you're going to send them a, you know, maybe bring in, now you bring in extra guys, extra equipment, you're going to send them a $5,000 bill? Well, no. this is just the turn the, turn the valve on, turn the valve off. Yeah. If, it's, if it's on your side, you're paying that by having a contract to come in and fix it. After we turn it off. So it's just the shit. on the street side, it's our responsibility, anyways. So it's just a shut. It's just to have the guy come out and shut it off. You know, on overtime, you pay three hours to turn the valve off. Do which can take a long time because, as you notice, most people, you can't see your valves in your lawn. You have to go find them. Oh, mine's in the middle of the driveway. Yeah. Well, the majority of them are, are, are buried about that far underground. Yeah. And they have to go around and get the maps out and get the tapes and measure and find it. Hopefully, the maps are right. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they take a yeah. lot. Do, do we like that it's a three hour minimum? No, but we, our hands are tied with regards to that. 620. 620? Okay. Well, then we need to, we can certainly go past, but we need to come to a decision on this. Um, and I don't know, I, I know Stu. Um, Mark, where do, you, where do you feel sit on this? Um, my problem is I don't want to screw the budget up for the 
we've changed it so many times now. That the budget? Budget? Yeah. yeah I think we should leave it like it is for right now. If we don't change it now and we want to revisit this after the budget's passed, can we make a change and have to, how, how would we do it so that we don't have to disrupt the entire food chain on the budget process? Um, well, it, it would because, like I said, it will affect this fiscal year, not by much because it's towards the end, but, you know, um, the budget, FY17 budget has already been approved. Mm -hmm. It's going through the process and it includes this small dollar amount for call outs for revenue. So I do recall the Board of Water Commissioners did make the vote to accept the fee schedule mm -hmm. and you had said that you would evaluate it in a year, <clears throat> excuse me, in a year, mm -hmm. which the timing would be right because if you were going to do that, you would have to make that decision before we do the budget. And that wouldn't affect anything if you had made, held off to maybe about January when we start to have budget discussions, I'll keep that in mind as I'm preparing the budget and not count on that revenue, just in case. So well, you're, you're not going to be on the board? Would you, if, you know, I, you know, give me my word, we'll put that back on there in December. Let me ask you this. Going back to 8 o'clock at night, if you have a bad water leak, you, you have to lose much more than $150 and you don't recoup that. Now here's somebody had a small lick and they have an $1,800 bill. That's, they collect 150, but if they don't call you in, you, you could have it lose that kind of water overnight. It's a bad leak. And it costs money to make the water. Yeah. In other words, you don't have, somebody doesn't have the incentive to, they know it's $150 to turn the wrench. They don't have the incentive to, they won't have the incentive to, to call it in until morning. That's how I feel about it. So, do you, you want to make the change this right now? I would like to, as, and as Mary Beth said last week to somebody up on Havel Street, they have very low water pressure. And, and she said it's been leaking for a few months now. How um, much water is it lost? It's gone through the treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So Mark, I know the budget will be severely impacted, however, not severely. I mean, we're talking about 5,000 or less. Yeah. You know, um, you know, is that something we could forego from somewhere else for this, this year? It will be up to the board. We want the customer to work with us, uh, and we want to work with them. But that's we're not working with them. We're trying to. I I feel as part of the service. That's how I feel about it. to feed and pay for the water. That you <clears throat> I would like to see some uh, the statistics first before we we would uh, impose it. Let's see what. What goes on? I mean, how many call-outs actually? I know we're saying 30 or 40, but let's see what they are. Let's see what that money is. Um, I don't think, given the history with the water department and fees and impositions, I th you know I think we need to to listen and uh, and as much trouble as it will be to uh, maybe just pull our horns in on this one and and just um, you know try to. Try to you know be part of the community on that one. Exactly, we're all in this together. Yeah. Together. So I know it's going to be, a, a, you know, we have a finance committee person here or two. I don't know if you can't speak in an official capacity, but how much trouble will this cause with the budget? We're scheduled to approve the budget this evening <laughs> for however long, you know, the budgeting of. The water, uh, police, and the warrant articles take. Okay. So, if you're withdrawing the budget, it's uh, a major has a major effect on the whole town. So it goes back to a question I asked before: is if we pass the budget and then rescind this fee, what will that do to the budget? 
if we go through town meeting and then we decide to not impose this if, fee. If you pass the budget and then rescind the fee, that has no effect on our budget uh, because that's, you know, you're decreasing your revenue, so you make it up however you see fit, just as if you gave somebody a abatement for certain things. Mm -hmm. You have to make up uh, that lost revenue. So the burden is on the water department to balance the budget. Uh, we don't necessarily get into the nitty gritty items as far as, uh, you know, did you really spend that money on fees and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Well, all our figures of funds coming in are anticipated anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think they could be budget funds for $5,000. So let's, let's let the budget stand as is. But um, as soon as we do, we have to wait for town meeting to make that to change that. Or uh, I want to go forth with the budget as established, but we will, you know, take a vote on rescinding the fee. All right. And Sue, so we need to do that before you leave. I think before you turn it up. Okay. Okay. Is that acceptable? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, was I know. For clarification, um, was that a vote to rescind? Nope. That is a vote to leave the budget stay as is, and it's a vote to review it uh, before student departs to the elections okay. turnover. Could you make it official? The, uh, if you're voting on it, I didn't hear. We're not voting. It was just that's oh. just, that's the okay. path that we're going to pursue. We don't okay. need to vote it. Okay. So. It's for the water department's own good. Customer sooner. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you. Did you want that on the agenda for the next meeting? Uh, probably the meeting after that. Let's get some time to. Uh, April. I'll see you afterwards. I don't know when. I don't have the schedule marked up here. When that meeting is, and when our next meeting is, I think it's the nineteenth. The nineteenth. Town meeting is what the second or ninth. Second. 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 So we would be meeting on the third. So May third. Fifth, nineteenth. Yeah, let's put it on for the nineteenth. The nineteenth. Okay. Yeah, we're having a short meeting that night, anyways, because we have the hearing, correct? Um, yeah, I think yeah, we're gonna have an hour meeting, and then we're gonna go into the hearing. Um, actually, we had discussed that. Uh, it's totally up to you, but. Um, I thought we, we had discussed the next meeting was going to be on the 24th. We were going to skip that, skip that, uh, the 19th. Um, the 26th. The, tw the 26th? Yeah, 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 the 26th, because I'll be, uh, I'll be needed at Town Hall to prep. Yeah. 26 is fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys, you okay with that? Fine. Next okay. meeting? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot about that, Mary Beth. I'm looking at the notes here. My own cryptic notes aren't clear. Okay. So. Um, so we're, we're past time on the 620 um, appointment, and that's an abatement request for Mr. Comley. Not here. And there's no one here to represent him. Okay, and I think we're, and we are on time now for Mr. D'Amato um, to discuss a letter received from the water department regarding having town water and a private well. Yes. Um, I don't want to keep both. But I don't want to pay a bunch of these fees to get rid of the meter. Um, I was under the understanding last year when I talked to Penichuk that it, there was no cost to me or you guys to keep the meter in the house. Um, I know you guys are worried about all the, you know, the backflow programs and cross connections and everything, which as of October 8th, the pipe above the meter has been cut. I mean, you know, about three feet above your meter in the house. So there is no cross connection. It hasn't been since October 8th um, when I hooked my house up to the new well. Prior to the whole house being hooked up, there were check valves in place. Um, so I was just, you know, I looked at the new fees that you have for cutting and capping and backflow testing, final meter reads, 
And like I said before, my water main is in the middle of my driveway. So you had it cut and capped already? No, no, I, I cut the copper line in my house mm -hmm. above the meter. And you cut it? And cut. It's just got a, a shock bite on there right now, one inch. The meter is still hooked up to your line coming into the floor. Um, still hooked up, but did you? Is it shut off on the driveway? The curb? No, 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 nothing has been done yet. Only because uh, it was scheduled for. Um, I have it right here somewhere. It was like two Wednesdays ago. I had it scheduled to get the meter removed and the water shut off, and I got a call from Sarah at Pennychuck and. Uh, Miss Weiser had put a uh, stop on to get the pipe cut at the water main in the driveway. She put a stop on it. Well, I'm getting my meter removed from the house. Is that because you had a water break or something? No. Someplace no. else? No. Mary got it. So the policy for the water department is there can be no cross connections. Right. That um, a resident can at, cannot have both. Um, a private well is their source of supply for drinking and town water. Mm -hmm. The policy is, that, I mean, the homeowner has a few options available. They can keep their water service and their well, um, you know, because so, they're already existing. These are customers that um, have gone to choice and decide not to have town water and drill the well, so they have an existing service. If we, allow, if we keep the existing service in the ground, whether it's shut off at the street or not, and you have a connection to the to the to the house. Um, this is a cross connection, and under the cross connection regulations, the um, you can't have it cannot be. So this the letter that the customers are receiving is notifying them of the regulation and the options available, um, and the board voted to assess a thirty dollar fee uh, to these um, property owners that have both. And the reason was, <coughs> excuse me, there's a water meter. In, on the property. We read the water meter every single month. Whether a customer uses the water or not, a water bill is generated. If we go to read that water meter today and we get a no read, uh, we have to replace that water meter. It's $300 for a water meter. We're not generating any revenue from that account because they're primarily using their well. So. That's why. If we take out the water meter, though, is that why is that? Not then you have no way of knowing whether the customer is stealing water, and we have customers in Raleigh that are not paying for water. Well, I could just go behind the meter, then, right? But I'm sorry. Couldn't I just go behind the meter then? If you're saying, well, that's I'm being accused of stealing water. I'm not accusing you. No, no, just, I mean it's just. Like I said, I, mean, I got pictures of where the water main is. It is smack dead in my driveway, and it runs the whole length of the driveway to the so house. So are we saying that he ha we'd have to go? No. The customer would have to, and, and uh, the board voted on that $600 fee. It was to assist customers that want to disconnect from the system. If you were to hire a contractor to come out and cut and cap from the curb stop to the water main, it would be three times, two times as much mm -hmm. as that. So. Because what's involved is the curb stop comes out of the ground, the, we remove from the curb stop to the water main. Now we have to repair the water main as if it was like a main break and put a clamp on it. Mm. The customer service will stay wherever it is on the property, underneath the ground, running from wherever the curb stop was to the house. At that point, there is no more connection to the water system. We remove the water meter and we're done. At any time down the road, um, if a customer's well fails, because they do fail, um, the yeah. customer would be able to contact the water department to um, apply for reinstatement into the service, and they would be subject to all the fees at that time. That's in the policy. Yeah. Well, it's, how come it's $4,000 to hook it back up, but it's $600 to cut it? Isn't it the same, same spot you dig in, same pipe you're working on? I'll put up to do something. And Mary Beth, the, if the meter was removed from this gentleman's house, he could put a little concrete in the curb stock, save a lot of excavation. If that is a viable. Well, it's, and it looks no. like from the box, 
the, the main is actually under the driveway anyway. Like your main trunk runs on the sidewalk. It's not even in the street. So if you had to dig up to cut out the whole T and the shut off, you're digging out the whole end of my driveway, which, you know, is all good, but for $600, there's no way you guys are putting that driveway back how you found it. Hmm. I just paid three grand to get it paved. <laughs> um, Mary Beth, what, what, you, would you say put concrete on what? the In the, the curb stop. That's like the thing you open up to turn the water on? Well, you put the wrench in. It would save, save the gentleman's driveway. Uh, I that's mean, there's a rational there's dozens approach. There's dozens of uh, uh, just sure. where you tap the line in there that don't go anywhere in the lines. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's vacant properties on my street that all have water gaps. services. Yeah. Nobody steals from those. I'm mean, inside the property line, you're right. Um, so, Mary Beth? Currently, the policy is what it is. If the board would like to make change the policy, I will have to rewrite the policy according to the board's wishes. But currently, we need to follow the existing policy. Or we may make an exception. And make amendments. Or we may make an exception. We don't have to change the policy. Then you're going to be making an exception for every single customer that has no. gotten this letter. Yeah. Can I ask for every policy one in place? Yeah. Where does this policy come from? May of 2015. Uh, that's when it was drafted or when it was put in place? When it was put, in place. Put in place. <clears throat> and the reason being is that from a, a public health standpoint, and that's one of the things we're going to be talking about on April 19th, is that uh, people have put wells in, and from a, a public health standpoint, they can't have both, period. Right. And by cutting and capping, and it's not a personal aspersion, but you've got a water meeting sitting, <clears throat> a water meter sitting there. If you take the water meter off and then just put it back, you know, sweat in new button. I understand. I, yeah. Well, the only reason I kept it there, honestly, when, when I talked to Petachuk last year, and they didn't inform me of any fees, they were willing to come and take it. I didn't want to have to pay the $3,000 fee to get it back if there was ever a problem with the well, like you said, they failed. So I just figured it wasn't costing me anything, it wasn't costing you, it was just sitting there in the basement. Penachuk never informed me that there was any fees. I contacted them before I put the well in, never informed me of, of any disconnecting fees or cutting and digging up and, you know, and, and that is your company I'm supposed to contact for information, because that's what, you know, phone numbers all lead to. You know, and when I spoke to Sarah uh, on the 21st, it, um, she was willing to just come and get it. She didn't say anything about having to cut the cap or anything. It's almost like they didn't know the policy. It would appear that way, but, um, you know, next to Mary Beth. I mean, after Mary Beth had her. Um, so when a customer calls up customer service uh, to make an appointment, the customer service rep is not a mind reader. So a lot of times customers will call up and ask for something, and then we get the work orders emailed to us. And I look at the, um, the, the, uh, the, the work order, and I see, remove the water meter. And I'm like, my first question is, why? So I call customer service and see if they had any additional notes on the account, and um, then they would say, oh, the customer drilled a well. And I'm like, well, okay, you need to call the customer back because when, when, a, when a resident makes an application with the Board of Health to install a well, whether it's a new drinking water well or a customer that wants a well, you have to go through the Board of Health. The Board of Health issues a letter, and on the letter it says you need to contact the water department. Um, so if a customer is tying, you know, disconnecting from the water system in, in October, and calling the water department six months later after the after it's already been done, you know the letter says to contact the certain departments. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And so we've had several of these things uh, where customers have called um, after the fact. And so um, at the time, if if you're calling customer service to make an appointment and you're not complete in your description of what you're looking for or why you're looking for that work order to be generated. They're only going to write what, what you tell them. They don't know that you're taking your water meter out because you're drilling a well if you, unless you tell them that. I did. So I'm not, I'm not saying like you oh, in general. Boys. We've had some customers call, um, and there's been some confusion with, the, with appointments that are made. 
So I look at them and I call panic check and I say, would you please call the customer? Uh, can you get some more information? Why are we doing this? Why is this happening? And then um, generally the appointment needs to get canceled. Um, and then, you know, we get it all worked out and then we reschedule it. So. This gentleman has a good point. He pays the $600 to have the water line service removed. And the water department has to repair his driveway. You're way behind the eight ball. Well, it's, more, it's a, um, a common sense thing, really. It's uh, do you want to spend $2,000 to pave a driveway to do the six to, uh, you know, work with the $600 fee? Um, before we keep going, you had another, did you have a question? So I have a question. So I'm in a similar position. I put in a private, I put in a well, and the idea was to run the irrigation because I was getting six, seven hundred dollar water bill. Mm -hmm. So all, my intention was to keep the meter for the house potable water and run the irrigation or run the irrigation off the well. But now I'm being penalized for that, which I thought it was responsible thing to do. I'm being charged thirty dollars for a, a service fee. Um, which I don't really understand what the service is, with no intention of, of hooking my well water up into the house. So I guess the question is, well, if I'm being charged an extra thirty dollars a month, well, I might as well just get rid of the meter and not be around my money at all. All right? Did you just you correct me for more? You're still using town water in your, in your house? Yes. Well, 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 you shouldn't be getting a thirty dollars. Exactly. Pay. That's my point. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this one because that's like another whole case. And well, it's valid, still, even if I even if I chose not to. It is, but I mean, we need to resolve Vincent's situation here, and then we'll if we have enough time, we'll get we'll talk about yours. It's not on the agenda, but I think it's, it's so close we should deal mm -hmm. with the same thing. But Mary Beth, um, if I could get your information before you leave, uh, we'll change that because it's correct. It's quick. Yeah. Uh, okay. Customers that have. We have several customers that have a well just for irrigation and they use town water for their primary source supply. The two systems are nowhere near even close to being connected. Um, so if you could make sure you leave me with your information, I will make sure tomorrow I contact customer service and we uh, make that change. We'll give you your information and I understand. we'll get that through. So because I may opt to get rid of my meter, so I'm curious to see how this is going to be resolved. Is yours down the middle of your driveway too? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, just so everybody is aware that it is the standard of the water department that the service line should not be run under a paved driveway for mm -hmm. these very reasons. So, if anyone ever had a leak, you'd have to dig up your driveway anyway. They should be run in the the lawn area, so it's it is in the policy. House was built when I was born, so I didn't do it. No, because yeah. the new, I built I had a house built in '90, and it's along the side of the property in an inn. So I don't want all the utilities are all next to each other. So it sounds like an older one. Um, so I don't I don't want to um, amend the policy, but <clears throat> from a, a a cost benefit standpoint, if we're going to have to pay to you know. Could we incur the fee, could we disconnect at the corporation and just leave the, leave the line there? We said the main goes in the driveway. Well, what am I going to do with the service? Just leave it there. Take the meter out. Mm -hmm. You know, leave it on his, his, his end of it anyway. You want me to disconnect from the corporation? What am I supposed to do with the lateral that's connected to the main? What do you, you want me to cap that? You want me to pull the curb stop? And no, leave, no, leave the lateral leave the, in there? Leave the curb stop, leave the pipe and everything because they're going to destroy, destroy his driveway. Just dig down to the main, shut the curb stop off, disconnect, cut it off, and cap it. But his curb stop is in the driveway? Yes, so just leave it there. So you want me to dig in the street at the water main and disconnect at the main? I don't, I mean, is that what you're going to do anyways? Going to dig safe. I, don't I mean, think maybe I misunderstood what you were talking about. I don't think He's got some pictures. Let's look and see. <laughs> if you look. Here's the, here's the main right there in the driveway. Here's the curb on the street, and here's where you guys have the water main marked. The sidewalk's right here. So this is the, is the street here? The street's right here. So it's at the end of the driveway. Right so it doesn't look street. like the water main's even in the street. That's Well, what you may not know, if you look at, at uh, plans, from the center line of the street, 
into about four feet of your front lawn was town land. No, I understand so that. So that, just that is in town. Right. I'm, I'm just saying it's, it's still sitting, you know, on the driveway. And this curb, I can tell you right now, that curb that runs the street, the paver track pulling out, and, and it's, it, I don't know how big it is. It just wouldn't come off. <laughs> what they trying to pull out? The curb that runs the street. Oh. <laughs> so. So and is it, there? It basically runs right to that corner, front corner of the house, mm -hmm. and it comes out through the floor in the basement. So, Stu, you had said if we pour concrete down the curb, stop and take the lid off, put concrete in there, and if we remove the meter, does that effectively make it so they cannot take water from the town? I can't put concrete there. I can't just fill it in with concrete. Why? Okay. It, 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 I've never heard of that before. If a customer doesn't want to be connected to a water system, you gotta you gotta sever the ties. I can't I'm not going to make a repair such as filling in something with concrete. I apologize with respect to the board, but that's an improper way of taking care of that situation. I, I don't know. Angle. So you're saying the only thing you you'd agree to is taking up the entire driveway? It's not that about me agreeing. It's about protecting the public health and safety and the water supply by not allowing these cross connections in the system. And for the a, policy. From a logic, then we may have to change the policy because, from a logical standpoint, if we can, you know, permanently disable their ability or, or their connection, period, to the water main, I, I see it as the same end result and probably more cost effective for the department. If the customer doesn't want to be tied to the system and the board would like me to go out and pull the curb stop and remove our side of the service and patch the water main at our own expense, then that's what I will do. Well, well that's, if that's the case, I need a bond in place to make sure my driveway is back, back the way it is. Well, I mean, for 600 bucks, get a paid driveway, I'm, I'm gained. <laughs> The other thing is that we could just say, then it's got to come out and we've got to, we don't have the ability to bill beyond the $600, correct? Or we have to absorb the cost to make it correct afterwards, right? Well, that would be up to the board. We currently you, have- No, you can't have it both ways, Mary Beth. You just, we just came up with an, uh, an, an approach uh -huh. and you said, I can't stand by that. And now you're saying it's up to the board. About the fee. So we have a $600 uh, fee which is on the fee schedule if a customer, you know, we offer that service at a, a very discounted rate, yes it is, um, but it was put in place to assist customers um, with that because if they were to hire a contractor to come in, at the, they don't have to hire us to come in, they could hire a contractor to do this, it would be well more with the paving alone to come back in, cut, cut and cap back to the main and then restore the property. So this was kind of sort of like a, a fee that was set up to kind of sort of assist the customer at a, re, a pretty reasonable rate if they ch decided to go that route. Um, that's all it was. If the board, what I meant by board decision, wants the water department to go out and cut and cap from the curb stop to the main at no charge, then that would be up to the board, is what I'm saying. If you didn't want us to charge a customer, if a customer says, well, I, do, I want to disconnect from the water system, mm -hmm. And we're going to come out and remove it from the curb step to the main. Then we don't have to charge a fee. We don't. We can go out and, if, if as Mr. Dazel said, maybe it's part, you want to consider it part of our normal operations. Then so be it. We can do it that way. Versus that is the correct what you're way. Is charging six hundred and doing what? Going from the curb stop to the house. No, no, curb stop to the water main. We would not, we don't, we don't work on private property. We would mm -hmm. not go on and remove their service. We would just go, we own and are responsible from the curb stop to the water main. That's our jurisdiction. So that's what we would be removing from the street. And is that what we charge the $600 fee for? Yes. Okay. And is, and that's a problem or you have an issue with that? From the curb stop to the main? On this picture, where is the curb stop? So it's up here in the middle of the driveway. It looks like the main is going out of the driveway, so I guess mm -hmm. you have to assume right that this is coming straight down. What's that? To the right angle of the 
the one I mean next to where we're going in the driveway, I think it's a 12. Oh, the curb stop right there. The, the curb stop is yeah. the name? Right. Yeah, water service. And that's probably the four foot section of the, uh, I call it the public way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's all town property. You're right. Yeah, it is. It's, so, I mean, do you want to see the picture we're talking about? Sure. Yeah, come on. So if we just stay with our policy as is, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go out, take the curb, go to the curb stop to the main, cut and cap, mm -hmm. and and then make the repairs to what we just did. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's the street. Yeah. I would have to look at the um, the plans to uh, this is a fairly new development, so I would I, I believe this is the dig safe mm -hmm. area um, that this is. I'd have to look, but I would find it very hard to believe if the water main is actually running there. I'm going to have to look. If it is, um, I would imagine the water main would be running under your, your neighbor's yards as well. Uh, it's and dig safe. Uh, yeah. I'm showing you guys my dig, yeah, that's us. dig safe. Yeah, that's us. I want to check on that. Well was put in. Yeah. It's a very fast. Still have a six foot square right here. Right. Right. Because is this a side to sidewalk, that's right? A sidewalk. Yeah. So, There's a storm drain at the end too. I doubt they'd run through a storm drain, right? There's a storm drain at the end of the driveway as well. Right in the middle. Yeah. So I would have to go out and actually take a look myself, and then look at the look at the um, the, the uh, street maps to see. You don't want to get into. Uh, it was a mistake here. You don't want to get into the storm drain. No, because you. If I heard you correctly, you're right. We would cut a square here. We would not be digging. We would not have to excavate the entire thing. What we would do is, is that um, we would cut cut from here, and then we would. Yeah, you know, basically what I said. Shake it shut back. Shut the curb off and just, yeah. just cut it. We would work backwards. So we would cut the square, cut it off, um, put a cap on the end of, of your service pipe, and then when we go out, we would be digging where the water main is. So I'm going to verify because I don't. I'm not quite sure. It's hard for me to see from the picture. What's your but, address? Uh, 46, 46 Christopher Road. So then we can, what we we'll do is, is that we cut a square here because we would have to access that. So it'd be a, we would patch that. We wouldn't be digging this up because we would pull it backwards. We would pull it out and then from the hole that we would dig at the main. We would disconnect at the main and pull it backwards. So we would now how come you have to cut anything here? You can't just cut it out here. Why do you have to go putting a patch in the middle of the driveway? Because that's where the curb stop is. I have to remove from the curb stop back. That's the shut. That's the shutoff valve, and that's what the policy is to remove from. If we were going to disconnect from the system, we own from the curb stop back to the water main. We're responsible for any repairs and that kind of thing. So we would remove all of our stuff and patch the water main, and then everything on this side is your responsibility and belongs to you. And if you right. had any issues, you would take it. But if you cut it at the main, this pipe isn't doing anything anymore. It's just sitting there. I mean, it can't freeze, it can't, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's... It's just it's, that prevents a cut in the middle of the driveway. It's... And if it's... I would still have to remove the curb stop. That's that's the policy. Um, it... I think for cost size, we can make an exception on this one. Could we, we take the... Could we do it at the main? you got to see it. Cut it off at the main. But if we cut it at the main and just abandon that, just and there was, it. it's going to just dead dirt, and did that and have the cut out of his driveway, at least into the street. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? You can, but it's not a good idea to leave what we call laterals in the street connected to nothing. That's a question of figuring so why. It's, it causes problems down the road. You, you go to it's dig, plastic. you get to put something. Wrong. Um, our, ours is copper. Yours is because right. plastic comes out. Right. Right. right, we put copper. Yeah. Our services are copper. Because right. they grounded the plastic pipe in the house, which they were very bright. So could we do this? And I, I know you want to get this resolved, but give Mary Beth time to go out and actually look at the property, mm -hmm. and then have another. Have you? I hate to ask you to come back for the the night, the twenty sixth, and we'll have some. She'll have some pictures, some looks, and verify what's where and whatnot. Would you be open to that? Okay. Now let me ask you. The six hundred dollars is that it, or am I going to be seeing more fees? Because it seems like it's, it, you know, I don't mind paying for your guys' time. I understand, you know, you get to pay guys for their work, but I don't want more fees occurred. 
afterwards. That's the fee. That's you would be no longer a water meeting. customer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw there's like a last meter reading of fifty dollars. But yeah, there's the last meter reading, and then do we remove the meter? The, okay, so he the doesn't. final. All right, so the final read I don't believe is subject to because the final read is you're moving, John. Yeah. Oh, okay. You have to yeah. pay a final water right bill. That. We right. charge for the final read. I think that that's what it is. I don't. So, so we would not. So once we remove all of this, you you actually would be removed from our It'd database. Be like you never had water. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. that's. But wouldn't we want to recapture the meter? We, no, no. When we go out to do all of this work, oh, once this is complete, okay. we would take the water meter Sorry. with us and then. Put account for that. No, the account. The 600. And that's it. And we'll try to come up with something where we're not ripping up the whole driveway. Well, that's, you know, should look at it and see. It'd be nice if you, because I had a patch, because you guys came in and fixed the thing once, and I repaved over it again, you know, I got two levels of drive, only because the plow kept hitting the patch and ripping it up. Every winter. And I know how patches, I, I mean, when you come down, you'll see my street. They try patching the storm drains. The plows rip everything up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so if, Mary Beth, you willing to do that? Go take a look. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So you and I can work together. We'll come up with a plan that works. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm a visual kind of person. Looking at a flat picture. No, no, I, I, I took my words to get some pictures just so you can. No, that's no, excellent. Yeah. So you did that because it's helpful. It is. Well, it looks worth a thousand words. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So we'll um, give you a shout sometime this week to set something up. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So you get two minutes. Just the foyer. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that. This is number three we've done. Um, I believe we're back to new business. Oh, no, no. Uh, Revote the uh, budget, uh, FY17 budget. So is there. Just the explanation sheet of the changes from last week, Mary Yes, so, so the... just walk through those? Yeah, the cover sheet is the changes um, to the budget that the board voted, um, I believe it was Mar in, um, earlier in March. I just went through that. And so some of the highlights of the changes um, were we had to add $3,800, uh, uh, excuse me, $3,800 uh, to page four, line seven, administrative property insurance and workers' compensation uh, that came in after the budget, the policy, the policy is going up. We discussed that the insurance is going up for the town. Um, so it went up from 26000 to 29000 um, We added $15,000 to line seven legal expenses to cover two litigation claim insurance, and these are the uh, insurance deductibles. Um, we decreased the revenue of hydrants from 72,900 and we level funded at 53,400. Um, so we had to make some uh, adjust further adjustments to the budget. Um, and overall, we decreased the water department expense line by 42,200 to, to accommodate some of the changes above. Um, and of course, we're still waiting. Uh, we won't know about the wages and salary increase um, until we have a settled uh, agreement with the union. So that's still pending. Um, and when's then- that, When's that due, do you know? They haven't even begun negotiations, really. Okay, the town's too busy on the other stuff. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and then of course, we are still waiting on the results for the RFP for customer service and billing. We should have something next week, but unfortunately, the warrant will have gone in, so the budget will, um, will go up. Okay. for those two fees. So basically, um, in your packet, um, everything, every number that has changed since the original budget that you voted on is kind of highlighted in a gray. So the other thing that we did, which we'll take a look at later on um, in the superintendent's report, is um, one of the changes that uh, you'll see is it says on, on page one under other, uh, line 12, capital plan program, you'll see a zero in there. Um, we're not going to carry the capital in the operating. We're going to, those you'll see later on, that same money that was originally in there is now in the form of an article um, going to town meeting. We'll be transferring from stabilization to the article for those projects that we had. Um, this typically the water department has historically carried some token amount in the capital line. Um, one year it was to purchase gate valves and hydrants. Uh, last year it was the truck. 
we carried that uh, the capital. So that's a change to what you originally voted on. Um, on, on page um, four, well, it's actually page two. There's two page fours, but it's the second page four. Um, you'll see where I just talked about the increase in the property insurance and the, um, the legal expenses. Yeah. You'll see those two changes highlighted there. Um, and then one thing that has changed, uh, if you'll turn to page eight, I'm sorry, page six, which is the FY17 capital. Um, I've been working with um, Sue Bailey over the last couple of days uh, to um, reorganize and restructure how we were going to um, actually pay for these capital projects. So uh, basically, um, we are going to be taking $739,000 out of stabilization and transferring that into the various articles for these projects. This dollar amount will not raise the rates. This is money we already have, and the purpose of that money is to transfer it to projects such as these, and to use, this money is being used to offset the rates, because if we had put that 790 in the operating budget, you would have had to raise the rates. So we use that stabilization fund to fund these projects. And then, of course, the next one, which we separated it out so you can see the two, we have that cleanup article where we had the monies that already have been approved for previous projects at uh, previous town meetings kind of just sitting out there so we researched and lumped them all together so that we could purchase some safety equipment and that's what that next line is mm -hmm. um, the other thing that increased was um, on page eight um, the Medicare line on the um, overhead, so our portion of the Medicare um, increased. Is that because you have more people or just the rates went up? I'm thinking the insurance is just going up. Yeah, my personal went up 7.5%. So if you turn to the last page on page 9, um, I've actually <clears throat> decreased the original request to two two million four hundred. I'm sorry, $2,498,537.25. Um, that, that is um, on the revenues page. That's a projected um, revenues. And if you, uh, so we've, we've actually decreased the budget quite a bit from the original. So the total request for the FY17 budget is, is just that. It's, it's the $2,498,000. 537. It is a, a decrease over the current fiscal year's request of 9%. Approximately $250,000 we cut out of the budget. And just so people will know too that, that that's it right now, but that'll be less when we get the, the new union contract. Right, so when we add in the additional monies for the salary, that 9% will go down and the 2.4 will go up. Um, so, the, so what will change that number um, will be the wages and salary, and then when we get the amount for the customers and customer service and billing contract. Um, one of the things I did do um, was if, let me see right there. Um, find it. Okay, so one thing I did do on page four, the first page four, if you look under services, remember we, we moved the customer service, service and billing um, dollar amounts into the service line. And if you follow down to the FY17 column, it's the very last one on the spreadsheet. Um, I actually, originally we had put a, uh, put a 58 in there just to put a placeholder for a number rather than putting a zero. But this time around, I increased it to, to 65. Um, <clears throat> so it isn't. So some of the increase for customer service and billing is already in here. So when we have to go back and adjust the budget, we I, we might be spot on. We might have more money in the line. It might come in at 62. So I thought it would be better to do that now, <clears throat> which we did. So and ultimately, it, it really didn't do much. It, I actually decreased the overall budget 
even further by another hundred thousand dollars to try to accommodate for some of the unknown increases. Well then, one thing I'd like to mention here uh, on the vehicles. Last year, we all agreed with Mary Beth to uh, keep the vehicles ten years, and here it's just five years. On page six. All the explanation. So you guys have made an agreement to do them every 10 years? Ten yes, years. I apologize. That's a typo. Yes, the okay. board did vote to, um, at my recommendation, to increase the vehicle replacement program from five every five years to every 10 years. And that's just a typo in the explanation for uh, the vehicle. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dezzo. Well, Stu, I know you're going to go, but I'm going to I'm going to table that because I want you here when we do that. Okay. Okay. Do okay. you share that? Sure. Yeah. No, I don't want to okay. do that. I have to okay. All right. Uh, uh, do you want to make a motion to accept this budget? I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Mary Beth. Nice job. Thank you. That's a lot of number crunching in a very short amount of time. <laughs> And I know I've tried to talk to you a few times, and you have had your head in the numbers. So, um, and for the people at home too, um, they should have an appreciation that you know Mary Beth has is really, <clears throat> as as things have developed, gotten a grip on the budget in this place. You know, um, if anybody's interested and still here at the end, you're welcome to take a look in the back. Um, in the past, this place was a mess. Um, this office was just a mess. And there was a wall here, the carpets were filthy. <laughs> it looked like a yard sale um, for very, very, very short money. We recopied the place, her guys, um, you know, doing it uh, not during their work hours, but still getting paid. They repainted this place, they patched the walls, they got the carpet laid. Um, you know, they just made this place look like a, a business that it should be versus a, an afterthought. Um, and again, in the garage, um, the changes out there, and I've only been here for a year, and, and so you've been here for a longer time. You were here before. I think you concur. No, it's very nice up there. It's, you know, and by the control, you know where your stuff is. You're right. Uh, John, I'd like to mention Mr. Conley's here. At some point. For the 620? Yes. I apologize. I had 630 in my apartment. Okay. Um, yep, I think we can go back if it is. So, um, can we pass the budget, Mary Beth? Thank you very okay. much. Okay. And now, um, Mr. Comley's uh, abatement request is in order. Um, you said there was a mix up of the timing. That's fine. Since you're here, we'll do that. If you can work it out one way or the other, you need a third party. Could you continue until the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So, this, uh, are there two? Are there, are there three here? I believe so, yes. Okay. So, I think we'll probably just take them one at a time. The first one I've got up is uh, from Maple Realty Trust, which I assume you're the trustee of. Okay. Reason for the abandonment requested uh, maintenance personnel compromised an irrigation line causing a water leak reported to me by Mr. Dalzell, owner about May 15th last year. How much is being requested? 651 dollars broken. Did you have a comment? Oh, I'm no, just I was just waiting for you to review that. I haven't read these yet. So. Okay. I just got them. 
The page you want to look at, um, Mr. Manning, is the page. You got it. Yeah. And the notes that are on the side. Mm-hmm. So you have to share with us as we're just reading through this. But Mary Beth, mm -hmm. on the third page, under current, is that the amount of water used? Uh, like 42, 11, 56? You know, 41, 349, 339? Right here. Yeah, I believe that's the... Um, the Not the, um, I think this is a reading on the water meter. So if you look at the reading before that, 338521 on the 624. Yeah. And then they read the meter on 527. I believe that's the, uh, what we picked up for a read. And then you have the next column, which is give you gallons used. Uh -huh. So that's it's confusing. so the first call there, the thirty three oh eight ninety four. That's the meter that's read. The reading. Meaning how many gallons have gone through the meter? Mm-hmm. No. Total. Total. No. Oh. It's it's factored in from what was read the month before, so you have to do the math by looking at the month before. Okay. And the difference between the two is the thirty eight thousand six seventy. Yeah, that's, okay. That's that's the actual amount. Yeah. It's the thirty eight mm -hmm. six seventy two. That okay. call me. All right. Which is more than double, even as big as month, from what I'm seeing. 
And the 40,000 gallon amount, is that from our policies or? This, if this request does not, is not qualify for an abatement for two reasons. Um, it's over 30 days turned into the water department for the request. Um, it actually is in a different fiscal year. And in order to qualify for the abatement, it has to, you have to have, the leak has to be over 40,000 gallons. That's what the policy is. Um, so one of my questions would be, what, and we just got this? Yes. Date of application is 10, 18, 15? Uh, That's what's on this. No, we did not receive this. In, um, this was received um, a month ago. Okay. I mean, this is from last fall. Um, was last there last spring? Actually, 15, yeah. Uh, any reason for the delay in, in filing or just just looked at the bill or, I mean? I have to get the federal paperwork done first, then the state paperwork, and then I do the local. So that's complete and they follow it. That's, if that's the policy, then I accept that. Well, I, I, I want to be amenable to trying to, to, to you know, work with you, but I, the biggest issue is our budget's long gone for this one. So that I, I would, uh, I think we should deny it. And also the, the 40,000, I mean, I, you know, a thousand here or there, I'd be flexible, but it's more the time factor and our budget can't support that. Mark, would you agree? I have to agree with that, okay. yes. So do we need to vote on this, these? Or? Yes, you do. Okay, yeah. so I'll make a motion. Make a motion. We deny it to the fact that it's almost a year. Okay, I'll second and then all in favor. over the time to. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Is that going to apply to all three three requests? No, we're going to take all three each. And, and unless they're all, you know, a year old, I haven't looked at them yet, so I'd have to apologize. Well, I'm going to say that. That will probably take care of Grandview, at least. Um, I'm hoping CU is still in the running, because that's rather substantial. Grandview is uh, from February of this year, correct? Frost-free hydrants. I can't read that, but it says leaking underground. Mary Beth, are these our hydrants? No, these are frost-free frost hydrants in the barns. That leaked while it froze? Underground. Yeah. The actual mechanism is supposed to be like four feet down. And have a lot of it's about six feet, feet down to keep it from freezing. Now this is 12.30, 15, I assume. One twenty seven of sixteen. Uh, What's that? Still look at this page. I know it. Look at it. These are all from 2015. Yeah, these were these were all from a, a year ago. Yeah, I just. Thank you.
Yeah, I, I, I just can't support that, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Right. You want to make a motion? Make a motion, we deny it. A second. All in favor? Right. Yeah. Again, very, very sympathetic to that plight, but again, from my budget standpoint and the time, it's difficult. The third abatement is off the cost. The relief is being sought for the cost group associated with E. coli threat on or about 921, at which time CV was forced to switch to emergency provisions. And that's the statement from your, your document. Did you get a notification from the water department that that was an issue? I got a call from clients that were concerned about the quality of the water going into the building uh, from I guess somebody's watching the tube the night of the meeting. It was being discussed and uh, got a couple of calls showed up at the meeting and I couldn't get any answers that uh, would allow me to keep the water in the building. I was at the selectman's meeting when that came up and there was um, unsubstantiated allegations that were made by an individual and they made them to an official in the town who then had to call the DEP because the, their hands were tied, they had to make that call. Again, unsubstantiated. Um, testing was done within two days, I think. It was our, our in process. But we had no results back from it. The timing was, um, was interesting in that those allegations were made at the same time testing was actually being done. And um, I'm not sure if you or someone else from Seaview was at the meeting um, with the selectmen and uh, they asked and there was no, again, no substantiation to any of the allegations. Um, there was someone that was from, had went to Maine, came back, so they had E. coli, and they said they got it, they don't know where they got it. And from there, it took off um, with people just, uh, I won't say making things up, but it was, it was almost uh, sad to say, like a game of telephone. People were just, were talking out of turn without, Authorization, and from a oh where you were oh well, I know what you were I, yeah <laughs> I know exactly where you were I'm so, I apologize um, but um, some some people that were um, were discussing it should not have been and it caused undue concern in the community um, unfortunately we had no control over the people that were making those statements. And the water department acted as well as the Board of Health as fast as practically possible. Um, I know they called the labs to try and accelerate the testing. But beyond that, Reba? Just so that you're aware, Mr. Comley, you are listed in our emergency response plan as a critical customer. And in the event that we would have had, if we ever had, potentially had an E. coli in the distribution system, uh, that is considered a tier one, and we would have a two hour window to, we would be enacting reverse 911, mm -hmm. and we would be making sure that the Sea View nursing home would have been notified, um, and the DEP would have come and it would have escalated from there. But um, just so you know that you are on our list, that we would be notifying you directly, uh, the nursing home, anyway, uh, you know, letting you know, hey, you know, do not drink oil or water, whatever was coming forth from. Yeah. Well, would you do that if it was questionable? There no. is no question. It either is or it isn't. If okay. someone's just saying, oh, a week ago I had E. coli and I don't know where I got it, I, that would be like yelling fire in the theater. Well, I don't think it was as simple as that because I wouldn't have acted on it. That was just a, well, a well, this, rumor. There were some other people making some well, statements. The that leaders were, of this town, our selectmen, could not answer any questions. They had no facts. They could not tell me that there was an issue or there wasn't an issue. It was being discussed. And when my clients question it, and I don't do anything about it, I just tell them it's, it's, it's a rumor. I mean, that's not acceptable. It was a concern. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get any calls from the water department. They had no facts. Uh, and they, they couldn't were, give again, me an answer that the water was clear either. No, they didn't. And they couldn't do that within two days. Regardless, my responsibility to my clients is first and foremost, I had to shut the water off. 
whether somebody was playing a game or not. I mean, it was one of your commissioners at the time who said there was an issue, correct? Uh, I'm not going to respond well, to that. Of course it's, but uh, that, that's fact, okay? It came from him, and it went through the town before I knew about it. Now, if there, was a, if there was a question from a person on your board that the water was tainted, that's all I need. I shut the water off. And when I do that, it's very expensive. And it just, I had to act on it. Mm -hmm. And it did come from your board. Now, I know he's not on the board anymore. I would correct you that it did not come from the board. It came okay. from an individual who was purporting to speak for the board. And he was not authorized, and he made those statements on his own and caused a lot of trouble. I checked with the board member directly, mm -hmm. and I was told that there was an issue. Mary Beth? Just so everyone is aware, we do uh, are required by Mass DEP drinking water regulations to go out and test for various parameters. One of them is for coliform bacteria and E. coli. We send our samples out to a, certi a Massachusetts certified lab and the lab reports back to me. In the event that um, they're checking on the samples and they see that a sample is turning because it is either is there or it's not. There is no in between. There is no question. Mm -hmm. If the lab reports back to me that the samples we collected today are absent for E. coli and absent for coliform bacteria, we're good. There's no further action. We just report that, our report to the DEP. How long does that take? It's a 24-hour test. Okay, so 24 hours later, if it's, my clients are drinking the water for 24 hours before they know anything. If there's a question, I shut it off, period. And then it took, I believe, two days to find out that the water was clear. So it's more than 24 hours. It was 48 hours before I got any information. Actually, I think it was longer than that. I, well, I apologize, I was not here to handle the situation, so I can't really speak to what happened. Okay, well, regardless, if, if, if people aren't working or on vacation or whatever, I still have some very frail people that are drinking your water, and I need answers. And if I can't get an answer from the selectmen and a member of your board, I have to act. If I can't get a, no, water's fine. I need something in writing that said the testing's been done. So... Doesn't sound like anybody's followed the guidelines here, and it costs me a lot of money. I would stop you there, and that as soon as the individual that you, you cited was state, making the statement to the um, to Debbie Egan, the town administrator, she enacted the emergency policies with the DEP, and she made a phone call to them. She called the water department, had the gentleman immediately go for the testing. So um, again, spurious allegations that were made by an individual. Who, who was speaking without facts well, behind I him. I don't know if that's the case. Well, it, it has been turned out I to be the case. It understand. has been turned out to be the case. There was no E. coli. The individuals in question from a week before with, with questionable water from Maine, they weren't sure if it was from here or there. Uh, again, uh, a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt was put in there. Right. Let me it, ask you it should have been controlled. If you had a mother in the nursing home and there was a question about E. coli, and you call the administrator, and I can't ask, is, are you reassured that everything's okay? You know, that's... that's. Uh, Would you uh, expect me to shut the water off and keep your mother safe? I'd expect you to do what you were supposed to. And as, I did. As you run your... As you and I take did. the risk of running your business. It okay. is your business. So this is a no? No, I didn't say that. I'm saying it's your business. You own it. You run it. You need to take the information that's available. And if it turns out for the safety of your clients, you should turn that water off, then that's your decision, that's a business decision. It's also a life safety decision. And I would, you know, I, not to say how you run your business, but you'd need to factor that into your business. That maybe once a year, you know, a, 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 allegations and rumors run luck. I mean, that happens out in the business place with other places. Um, and to the effect, personally, yes, I'd be very, very concerned. Um, however, all the steps that we could take at that time. Did you guys have a concern? About yeah. the water? No, I did not. At that time? Then why did you have it tested? Because under we had a gun to our head. There was no choice. Okay. As soon as somebody That's made the gun. A, Same a rumor, gun that was to my head. Mm -hmm. Okay? So as soon as someone made it. It started rumor, within the department. Mm -hmm. Leads me to believe that there might have been something to it. It didn't start within the department. It was someone speaking without having the facts. It's not a and they just, 
Well, uh, and I, I know you guys got to cover yourself, so I understand where you're going with it. Mm -hmm. But it was a legitimate concern. And regardless, the selectmen didn't have any answers. They wouldn't until they got it from the Board of Health or for us. Or Mary Beth? Yeah. It's my understanding that the reason that the Water Department went out to um, collect the samples was to just um, validate and confirm that what was falsely reported mm -hmm. was in fact false. Mm -hmm. So they went out, the selectmen met at night. Um, we had to go out the next day. So you mentioned it wasn't the next day. So next day the water department was contacted. They went out, it's my understanding, I wasn't mm -hmm. here. Yeah. They collected their samples. They drove them to the lab and the lab analyzed them. The results came back in on Wednesday, so it was it appeared to be three and days. They were fine. It was 48 hours. We, they re-ran the compliance the samples. Mm -hmm. They went out to the same sample sites um, mm -hmm. to recollect the samples that they had previously coll collected the week before, which were mm -hmm. absent for E. coli and absent for coliform bacteria. Mm -hmm. And the confirmation samples they took on the Wednesday confirmed that the results we got the week before were valid. Mm -hmm. Is there any accountability when you take these samples? Mm -hmm. There's a chain of custody for the samples that go from well, Mary Beth can speak to the technical part. Yes. Yes, there's chain of custody. There's a certain way to transport them. They're transported in a cooler at four degrees C, and it's trained staff. They're licensed operators. And who's witnessing these samples? Just one person? Biomarine Labs in Gloucester is where we take our samples. Who's taking the samples? Just one person? There was two. For this. Um, was the any one of the operators are trained. The operator. yeah. I would have to go back and look at the paperwork to see who actually collected the samples that mm -hmm. day. But um, any yeah, one of the staff is qualified. The licenses to do it. It's routine sampling. They do it mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there was a question of E. coli, would you notify me? If the lab contacted me and said, confirmed, you have. E. coli in your water, yes. And that would be 48 hours into it. And quite possibly with frail elders who might have a compromised immune system are dead within that 48 hour period. Well, I can't answer to that, but I just know that we follow the DEP regulations on how you follow through if you get a hit for E. coli, um, the DEP would be notified, and once, actually, once we, did, if we did, and I did contact, the, had to contact the DEP, and it was a hit, they would, they would take over. They would be driving mm -hmm. the program. They would be the ones to say, you must issue a do not drink order, or you must issue a do not boil order. That doesn't come from us. That comes from the DEP. If we were in that situation. So on an ongoing basis, you know we. Rumors are one thing, and that's what we were dealing with in this case. It was someone making allegations that were just not correct. If we would never know E. coli until our regular testing, so it's a, it's a consistent exposure. We would, we would just never know unless we have testing every single day, and that's... It, that's sounds, like, it sounds like there'll be a no for the reimbursement on what I've spent. We'll, we'll so it. with that, um, I'd like to go backwards, and this gentleman over here has an irrigation system and a house system. Do I have that option? Do I have an option to have a portion of the nursing home on town water and then a portion of it on well water? Yes, no. Why not? Because that's a cross connection. Even though I have backflow preventers and everything's in place? It has to be, it has to be separate. Or if I can separate. totally separate the two systems? If you can totally separate them, and you, you have to disconnect from town water. Hang on a second. There you go. In the event of, um, your, your establishment is considered a commercial business as far as our records. So they come under more, the, the residential is one thing, but this is considered a business. Mm -hmm. um, the Seaview Nursing Home is subject to um, surveys, which you went through this past year. Um, any backflow preventers that they have in, in place, they're required to have them tested, and we come out and make an appointment, and um, we go out and test them. So um, any changes of that nature, in order to be able to evaluate the situation, you would have to make application with the, with the department. We would have to review it 
and, and take a look at that. It's a different than the residential, so okay. we would have to take a look at that. What I would like to do, because I'm a little paranoid about the water in town. First of all, I haven't drank it in 10 years. It's not the water we used to have. Um, I would say most of my clients find it totally undrinkable. You can taste and smell the chlorine coming out of it. My septic system is a very expensive system. It has not worked the way it's supposed to work in I think about four or five years because of the chlorine levels that are going into the system and killing the good bacteria or whatever it is that keeps the system going. If I have to replace that system, I'm going to be in big trouble. What I would like to do, I have actually Seaview, or the Fennel Mansion, was the first water department in town. We have extensive an extensive well system. It's still online. The line still goes into the building. It's been cut off and sealed. I would like to bring that line back on for about three quarters of the building. And that would protect my, my leaching system for the most part. We have two systems. One system is on the laundry, so all the chemicals and so forth and the bleach and detergents go into one system that's smaller. And then the main system would be divided out for the well water. I would like that as an option, not only to preserve some of the assets up there as the leaching system, my plumbing system, and so forth, but the cost of the water, with the fact that we can't really drink it, and it is destroying our plumbing and our leaching system, I really need to separate it. Would you be testing it daily? I would have to, because I would have to be considered a public water supply. Well, there's no, Mayor Beth, correct me, there's nothing that would prevent him from seeking that path other than complying with the rules and the regulations from not only the town but from the DEP, cutting and capping. Well, I mean, the big thing here is my, my sprinkler system and the other portion of, of the building would be on town water. If I have to come off of town water, that increases my cost for the well system about 150000 because of the size of the pumps and reserve and so forth. If we cut off of town water, there's about 300 feet of eight inch line, if I remember correctly, it goes down the hill. We also have one hydrant on our side. I wouldn't imagine that would be cut off. I mean, what are the rules here? Is there any room to move? Can I get away with it or am I just wasting my time? I don't know about a hydrant. I right. would recommend that you submit your project to the Water Department for review and we take a look at it. I, I would not want the Board to make any decisions regarding this project until we have more information and I can actually take a look at it. My recommendation would be to put a proposal together yeah. and give it to us and we'll work with you. I mean, we're not trying to say you can't do this, but we, we, we do want to work with everyone, so give us a proposal, schedule some time for us and you know, give us some time to review it first check whatever rules and regs, and then you know, we'll come back with you with where we think things can be done, can't be done, whatever. Mark, would you agree? Oh, definitely. Okay. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Um, do you want to make a motion? Now? So we we'll Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What were you we talking about in terms of the, what was the request? How much for this last one? For the last one? $2,300 for all the private time that uh, was spent, um, a lot of water, private water they brought in, a gallon of bottled water, and uh, there's another bill in here too for uh, it's like his own mileage test. and, and test lab, lab testing, and, yeah, and water supply, so it, it was aggregated to $2,300. But that's an example of, of someone speaking out of turn and with, with spurious facts. Um, and it caused you know, a lot of heartache for a lot of people. It wasn't just himself. So um, let me see. Back to uh, next item is on the new business. How are we on time? Good. Um, I just got one question for you. Mm -hmm. How far did you say from the street to Tomlin's? 
what I've seen is four feet from, um, from the center line to the edge of the curb, like another four feet in. Because I was going to do something with my yard, and it turns out the that edge it was, of the... Like from the, tar, the edge of the tar, another four feet. If you look at your plot it's plan, 40. it should be on your plot plan. On Weatherfield Street, it's 40 feet. From the center line? From the, I don't know whether that's 20 feet from the center line or 40 feet. I think it's the best feet. thing to do is re refer this question to uh, yes. the highway surveyor. Yes. He's and the map. If you have a yeah. plot plan, it'll show it on your plot plan. Or with the town. It should, yeah. Where the town line is. It's like here's the, here's it's, the road. It's different. My, my, the road right up to my property line, I live on Burke Ave, and it's right there. But the newer places, like where you live, it was just all mapped out because they just accepted your Yeah, well, that's when. So yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I suggest go see the highway surveyor. Yeah. He was in town hall. That'd be at the highway guys on uh, Independence Street. But Patrick Snow. Pat Snow. Yeah. yeah. Just one other thing. Yeah. So it, as Mark mentioned, depending on where you live in town, depending what the zoning is or whatever. So that is an excellent idea to check in with Pat. He will be able to, to help you out with that, for sure. He'll yeah, have the record of what that yeah. is. You guys typically put the curb stop on town property, or that can land I don't know. Um, I can't speak to that. Wherever the contractor puts it, that's onto your property. Okay. I mean, that big, road wasn't accepted for how long? Uh, There's reasons it wasn't accepted. Because it's a shit. Honestly, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> But they still haven't fixed it, but that's a different issue. God. Okay, well, I'm just curious. My wife just measured it. It's 12 feet in from the mm -hmm. street. That's why it's curious. Yeah, yeah, it's, like I said, the best thing to do is, because they're, they're, everywhere is different, depending on when it was built, what the rules and regulations were at that time, or if there were any. Yeah. It doesn't change with the bylaws. It should be. Like I know this, you know, Todd Danvers is three feet. Pat, Pat, Pat will know that, what's yeah. going on now. Is he a town employee or is yeah. he? Yeah, he's, he's your, your elected highway surveyor. Yep. Highway surveyor. Yeah. All right. Yep. I'll go talk to you. Yeah, I just want to talk to you. Absolutely. Because I, unfortunately, I'd have to say that there's inconsistencies around town. Mm -hmm. oh. They just don't have a set. They do now, but over the course of, I mean, I built the house in 91 and the rules and regs are all completely different. Okay. Um, when I put in my water service, they went from, they changed from copper to that heavy black plastic rubber pipe. That's furious. Um, but too bad but that I wanted a house. I had to pay the, they had just raised the fee to like $2,000 and 500. Um, you know, it's just, right. it's an ongoing situation. <laughs> and then, you know, what the standards are and what, uh, again, street by street almost, outlying districts versus the new, um, uh, it's the zoning board too. Makes has been mm -hmm. a little up and down over the course of years. I guess is the best way to put it. So at some point they should just decide this is uh, so many feet in. The, well, when they first made this the streets back street in six thirty nine, they were mm -hmm. little cow paths. Yeah. And as the, this, the on there, they keep stretching them out as they hot top them. So it could be. But mine is right on the road's right on my line. They are an old street, so exactly. you're right there. Oh, so you're saying the town owns. The street, because that was the yeah for my property, whatever yeah. the time was. Okay. Yeah, it's it's it's, just, it's inconsistent. It's I, I don't know. All right, you should have that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, back. Thank you very much. Yeah. New business. Uh, Wendy Hovey, um, or sixty-two Pro Hovey. Hovey. Yeah. Sixty-two Prospect Street. Would you like me to just give you a Sure. Can we give the summary? Sure. sure. Um, so, uh, 62, uh, the property, uh, 62 uh, Prospect Street has been vacant for quite some time. Um, Ms. Hovey is apparently living, I guess, next door in another home. I think it's around number 52. And so the house has been on the market. And so there's been various open houses. Um, you know, various showings uh, from real estate agents. And at some point, I don't know why somebody would do this, but somebody apparently turned on a faucet in like an upstairs bathroom or something. And at the time when they did it, the water was coming out. At that time, the pipes were probably frozen, um, you know, because it was during the winter months. 
and then never shut the faucet down. So apparently, when the husband was going all over to just you know check on the property, he heard water running and found the faucet or the tub running in one of the bathrooms and shut it off. So they had no idea how long it was running for, and they got their water bill. So that's basically that in a. In a What period of time are they looking for here? That's the usage is zero on all these. Okay, so this is a, so this is, um, this was not uh, presented to the water department as an abatement. So this did not go through the abatement process because the customer did not request an abatement. Mm -hmm. So what you have before me, uh, <laughs> before you, is um, the usage history for going back all the way till um, 2013. Mm -hmm. So you can see the usage. Which the usage column is zero. Or am I reading that report wrong? The usage is all usage over. is uh, the consumption is seventy thousand gallons. Yeah. What they're talking about. Okay. okay, so there's this usage seventy thousand five sixty nine. All right. Yeah. And they're usually you know, usage is like three thousand. You know. Yeah. The highest I'm seeing here is seven thousand. Oh, well, I'm looking at this bill. Okay. Yeah. On the first page, if you look at the very top, and you kind of go along the, the bolded topics for the column, and it says use, usage, R E P L, or, I mean usage, the, the columns are kind of squished, the, 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 the names of the columns. But if you follow that word usage straight down, and you'll see 70,569, that's the usage. So they had a faucet running in there with no one knowing? Yes, that's what it was reported to uh, customer service. Why didn't they ask for an abatement? I, I don't know. I mean, if you look at the previous history, their usage is pretty high anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this 10 to 12 in there. 70 is a lot. But I don't think we can do anything unless they were asking for an abatement. And even then, I'd be. What are you going to do? I'd be able to take the, the highest reading. And you still you meet the 40,000 criteria. Yeah, I mean, well, the 70,000 qualifies. Mm -hmm. However, I'd still be reticent because of negligence, not like an act of God or. or mm -hmm. Would you like me to put this in the calculation for an abatement? To so you can see, or? I don't know if I'd be open to an abatement. I mean, I don't know, Mark, what's your opinion? Well, they need to apply for one if they want. Yeah. Number one. So we, we, I don't think we can really hey, hold on. I, I, I won't act on this. So if they, they do want um, relief, I'd, I'd ask them to go through the abatement process, and uh, we'll consider it. Um, you know, just something to think about. Okay, we'll contact the customer yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, to fill out the okay. abatement process and put it on the agenda for the next meeting, the 20. Uh, I think, you know, because of the time, the time frame, we can waive that because yeah. I don't think they understood the process. Yeah, so be open to that. So we're looking about $1,500, is that? 1800 for 70,000 gallons that went running through. Okay. Um, new business number two, vote to donate the dump truck. I'm going to ask to have that tabled until Stu's with us next time. And then reinstating water charge for all town departments not currently paying for water usage. Um, 
Let's talk about that a little bit, but I think, again, I'd want to have Stu here on that one. Mm -hmm. um, this came from a question for me. Okay. But I, mean, I, don't, I have no idea why some departments pay for water and some departments don't. And I'd like to know why. Good, good question. Good, good question. Any idea? idea? Um, it's just, this, just the, the, it's the way the past is, and um, when, when we should be when consistent. The, when the enterprise fund was put in, all the departments were notified, because I was on the five pound at the time, mm -hmm. that they had to stop paying water bills. Yeah. And somewhere between then and now, some of the comments don't. I don't know what the rhyme or reason is. Do we have a list of who is and who, who does mm -hmm. and doesn't? Mm -hmm. You want to share it? Um, the the, uh, the wharf, the cemetery. What's the first one, the wharf? The state, I mean the town wharf, yeah. the cemetery, um, and... Well, the park department. For the uh, park. They have... Uh, they have their own well. Oh. Oh, I, yes, but I, you talk about the gazebo, the green. Oh, there is an irrigation time. system there, and it it was set up to be metered. It's not functioning. We're going to be working with the highway department to fix that setup so that the um, it's working again. It's on the schedule to make that repair. That's metered. So it's a, I believe it's just the cemetery and the town wharf, and then um, we there were some others, but we've we resolved those unbilled. Customers last some of them last year, so. Um, well, I think with the if they haven't planned for their budgets this year, maybe we use this year to put them on notice that FY eighteen, mm -hmm. you know, here's what your bill was for FY sixteen. Here's what you you use FY sixteen, and we didn't do it in time to catch you for FY seventeen. However, take due notice and govern yourself accordingly on FY eighteen. Okay. Plan, here's the amount that you've spent 16, we'll tell you what 17 is, and you should plan for it accordingly for the uh, FY18. I think that's the, the right way to do it without, yes, you know, I, that, that, was, that was actually my intention. Okay. Was to, the budget's already in, so. And I think we need to do that with an official note from yourself to the other department. Which we, you know, I'll prepare something, I'll yeah. let you see what it is, and you mm -hmm. let me know if you're satisfied with the letter. Yeah. And, and just all by what we just discussed, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, again, it's it's an enterprise. It's not, you know, we've got to pay for what we make. Um, mm -hmm. The days of, of just letting it go because it's really, you know, we're just throwing the chlorine in it. Um, those days are done. Oh, and I forgot. And, and we don't. And we don't get charged for water. <laughs> okay, put yourself on notice. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense for us to get a water bill because we're going to get a water bill and then we're going to pay for the water bill out of the same account. We keep track of the usage for the non-revenue, mm -hmm. but, but we wouldn't give ourselves a water bill. It come, we get a water bill, but it says zero for the dollars. I, we track the usage. It's very small. Hmm. <laughs> you don't pay yourself. I wouldn't think you would. <laughs> I know. Just, I'll find your <laughs> expense. Uh, so the next thing is the uh, superintendent's operations report. Was that... Was that the was that the decision? Were you was that you going to vote for me to do that for FY eighteen, or do you want to wait? Think for we need to just just that's so. Uh, I'll make that a motion. Yeah, yeah we'll make that a motion to what we just second. Okay, okay, very good. Thank you. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Approved. Thank you. Okay. Um, kind of with time. Uh, I can be quick. I was just going to say <laughs> if you could, if you would uh, please give us the abri abridged version. You got it. Okay, I uh, just want to let the board know that the Marion, I talked to the board about the Marion Way subdivision. Um, that's back in the conversations in the town, so I'll be working with the department as we go through the process, and I will update the board on, on that. Is that the 46 of the 21 houses, something like that? That's the 40 new, yeah. potentially 40 new customers. I believe when I see it. <laughs> It's basically the same plan we had before. Yeah. Um, in your packet, it's also, and I apologize, it just came in, I haven't had a chance to read it, but there is an update on the healthy farms on Haverhill Street, so um, the board wants to take a look at that. We can put it on the agenda for next week. Yes, please, for the next, uh, the 26th. Yeah. I'll give you a chance to look over the document that I received. Is that another one? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any 
summary of it, or it's just that they? I, I they haven't even looked at it. I got it in, and I want to make sure you've got a copy okay. of it. Uh, the next thing is, I just want to make the board aware that we have complied with the water use restrictions, um, the Mass DEP drinking water regulations, and in your packet, um, every every April we're required to notify the DEP of what the intent is for the water department on uh, water restrictions. So that's gone out yesterday or today to the DEP. Um, I last meeting um, we talked about um, that the Department of Labor and Standards came to visit the water department to go over the trench excavation program, and we received an inspection report. I mentioned that to the board last week. I actually did that. Um, and I um, had a uh, chance to look over the report, so um, I just wanted to read one little paragraph, if I may, in the letter. Um, it's the third paragraph. Raleigh Water Department has impl implemented a comprehensive and proactive trench safety program and should be applauded for this effort. As an example, Raleigh Water Department has a written trench safety procedure including a written inspection checklist and has instituted an internal written excavation permit process which goes above and beyond the requirements of the OSHA excavation standard and serves as an excellent model for other municipalities. The superintendent also incorporates significant accountability into her safety program, such as personally conducting spot checks on external job sites. This accountability is a critical element in ensuring employee safety. So I just want to read that. Good job. Thanks. Well done. So today I actually, in your packet, uh, put together um, the response. Um, I briefly mentioned about uh, what we needed to do, which was um, which is already taken care of, uh, we'll be purchasing the shoring. So we actually technically have to have everything on site to deal with multiple trench openings or any trench size shape, soil material. That's the standard. Currently we have a collapsible um, trench box, but when you put it together it only opens up to a certain size and you can, it will only fit in a certain hole. Um, so we already incorporated purchasing um, the shoring, which is a definite crime because the shoring will allow you to adjust to the different situations you come into. So what we'll be doing in the future is um, the distribution crew will be evaluating the site uh, based upon the recommendations and the report to determine, uh, we'll incorporate that to our existing report, um, program to make sure that we're in compliance and working safely in the field. That. And then the next thing in your packet are the actual warrants for the articles. Mm -hmm. So if I could get a quick vote on this just to make sure this is exactly how it's worded, go, uh, being inserted into the um, warrant just to make sure that we didn't miss anything the first time around. I'd feel a lot safer if you, you know, voted on this uh, to move forward. Who would be speaking at town meeting? Should that be me or you or both of us? That should be the Board of Water Commissioners. Oh. You know what? <clears throat> one for me, one for you, one for Stu. No. <laughs> I don't want to do for the town meeting. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, I and and I will be waiting in the wings for backup support. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, my thoughts are to make a little PowerPoint presentation. These are all the same time. Two, 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 three, four. It's to make a little deck to talk about these, each one's, boom, 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 here's the reason why, so on and so forth, and then, you know, entertain the questions um, as each one comes in order. Um, you know, the, the, the parking area, I would just say, you know, some of the issues that went on, we, um, we could not get it out to bid timely, so the money was there. We just want to, you know, put it back out for bid and get it done, you know? Um, the retrofitting the gas fire dehumidification system. That's a two thirds vote. That'll be difficult. Um, let's see what is prospect kill tank. You know, I think you know the, there's very convincing arguments for 24 for, for the, the dehumidification, especially when we've already had some uh, degradation in the plant and uh, failures caused by corrosion. And that you know, a twelve million dollar plant with a 
you know, 69 cent fan isn't going to cut it. Um, was it, should it have been incorporated originally? Yep. Was it? Nope. But now we know about it and to not deal with it just risks the entire investment. And we have the money put aside to address this. So we and just that is, to that is it. key, John, what you just said to mm -hmm. make it important. There's a, we have an awful lot a town meeting and a special town meeting. These are very necessary projects. The total dollar amount is not going to increase the rates, and we have this money in the enterprise fund and stabilization for this purpose. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't pass a town meeting, the money sits there, and the money sits there, and the money sits there, and it's mm -hmm. only going to get more and uh, more money and more money. It's there money. for us more it's there for us to do this. It's in there so. for this purpose. The other thing, I want to have a, a small deck of, of, to speak for these is, you know, I'll go through all of these and then just say, you know, one of the slides is going to say, are the rates going to go up? No. This, you know, all of these activities will not increase the rates. And I'm going to put a little note there to say what the budget was for, you know, 16, 15, 16, why did it jump? Plan came online. 17 is here, and you know, as we you now have a whole year under your belt and the ability to control it, you've driven down and you get control of the costs. Does that mean our rates are now going up? No, the rates eventually will rise with inflation and the cost of everything else rising, but they will not be just raised by fiat because we want to or think we need to. We'll justify any rise in the rates. So you wanted to do a PowerPoint presentation, okay? Yeah. So did you um, want me to, because I can set it up for you, mm -hmm. and I can send it to you for review, and then you can edit mm -hmm. right in that Back PowerPoint. We'll just work from the one document if you would like, but I'll do the heavy work, and you can just did do you, the editing. Did you do Google Docs? Google Docs, no. Never mind. <laughs> uh, no. I don't have time to do all that other stuff. Um, so technology. I can put that together, but um, I'm going to put, what I'll end up doing is put one article per slide, because what you want to include is also who it's inserted by, recommended by, and the explanation, so I'll, I can do one slide. I'll see what it looks like. It might be too much for the one slide, because there's an awful lot of words for some of the... Um, I would just say, you know, finance committee... Delivery abbreviate. Inserted. They don't say if it's recommended. Oh, that's nice. They, I don't think they've... Okay, you just yeah. that. Some of them do. Yeah, they do. So we don't the vote on it yet. No, the finance committee is voting tonight on these on these things, um, and the uh, as I mentioned, the board of selectmen have just voted on all this stuff. So these things are rolling out the town administrators, you know, computer as they are getting done and approved. So this is the draft warrant you're re you're seeing. And it should all be approved. But it's pretty much. It's pretty much how, how is it, with the occasional uh, exception of a typo that we'll pick up before it actually goes to print. So um, this is the actual what's getting inserted. And just so that we make sure, I would just ask the board to please vote to just approve these. Uh, so moved. Seconded. Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Um, I think that when we do the slides, though, if it does say recommended by FinCom, we put that in there. I will put everything that, yeah. and what I'll do is I'll say that anyways. Okay. Um, and the uh, first slide, Mary Beth, would be, um, I think the first slide would be the, the, you know, the fiscal state of the state and that, you know, his last three years is what's going on and, you know, uh, maybe we show, we show a, a, a pie chart, not a pie chart, a, uh, a line chart like this showing expenses that way. Um, and re uh, fees, not fees, um, expenses doing this and uh, oh, rates, well, rates doing this so that, you know, we're doing that mm -hmm. so that, you know, eventually when this line goes this way, you know, we do cross that line, we, people can see and make a projection over the three years that, you know, maybe in the third or fourth year, we'll, Things will the lines the lines will cross. I would I will speak to that. I can see it in my head. I would lay that out. But anyways, so the first slide would be you know big picture finance. Second one um, I think could be a little more entertaining if you're going to get a picture of a person with a broom. That's a housekeeping issue. Article 22. I think you should always you know keep a little light. Um, but you know you can put the, the four dollar amounts there and. 
you know, the, the details in the in the warrant. They can read the details, but basically sweeping this money up to uh, do something good with it. And then we get serious on the, the other things. Just one clarification. So for the first slide with the overview, how many fiscal years do you want represented in your chart? Three or four. Going out to 17. That's all so you play right so now. So FY15, do you, so when it goes to the warrant, what, what the people are voting on or can see, they can see 15, 16, um, they can see the actual 15, yep. what was budgeted for in 16, because that won't be an actual until it's all said and done when the year is over, and then what we're requesting for 17, do you want these numbers? Make it the same way, 15, 16. Got it. Okay. Yeah, go, go easy, but it's, it at least I want to put it in a graphical format because it's easier to see a trend mm -hmm. that way versus a table okay. of numbers people are looking at. Yeah. But a little graphic, I think, would be helpful. I mean, we're doing the work that we're going to talk about anyway, so mm -hmm. let's, we've approved it. You and I will talk, we'll work on that. Okay. Minutes, Do you have a chance to look these minutes over there? Yeah, they look right to me. Second motion. Second motion approval. Uh, second. Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Did you want to change something? I had one more thing on my report that came in. Oh, okay, we'll go back. So I just, you cut me off. <laughs> Sorry. Like it's okay. Get hungry. It no, was no, just, just, I <laughs> just one quick thing because we are going into shutoff season. Mm -hmm. So when I initially presented to the board, we had 182 letters that went out to customers for 60 days overdue. Today, the second notice went out and we're at 83. 60 days overdue. So I just want to give you a quick update on that. Shut off on April 18th for all non-pay for 60 days overdue. Those customers, the letters that they received in the letter, because you have to notify the customer if there are any charges associated, they will be charged the $150 fee. That's... Okay. They should be. Okay. And what's the revenue that's not been generated? Um, I don't have that dollar. I don't have that dollar amount tonight. Okay. Anything else, Mary Beth? No. I told you it was a this time. <laughs> Suggestions for next meeting? Do you have some? Yes. Oh. All right. Get them up. Come on. Just one. Uh, the okay. community got What about it? Uh, Just put it on the agenda? Do you have the service? Oh, that's the one that had the leaky pipes last year? No, that's the one that's the one that's going across the people's lawn to the hydrant. Okay. Yeah. Let's it probably that. should be some kind of a permanent solution, maybe if we even invited them in to talk about it. I can give you an update after the meeting on the efforts that we've gone through and uh, met with the community guidance people several times. Um, it's up to them to figure out what it is they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not happy about going to have to set it up the way it was this year, tying up the fire hydrant and for the season and the pipe running above the ground and that kind of thing. So that's why I think we need to find a solution one way or the other. I presented CPA them things. with several. Mm -hmm. So if yeah, you want to come by and see me, funds. Mark, I can give I you an update. Hmm? I think I asked for CPA funds. It's too late for that. <laughs> Is it? All right. Thank you both for your Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Soon enough.